Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 131. Now when we left off in our last tutorial, we were just about to start creating our own little uh, tooltips. So let's go ahead and open up Mono Develop, and let's start implementing that. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is uh, capture the tooltip that we're going to get when we hover over our GUI elements. So I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to create a new private variable. And it's going to be of type string. And I'm just going to call this underscore tooltip. And I'm going to assign it uh, an empty value. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom. And I'm going to create a new function. This function will be private. It's not going to return anything. And I'm just going to call it set tooltip and it's not going to receive any values. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to want to do in here is to check uh, the events that we're getting from our GUI and I'm going to check to see if our current event type is equal to the repaint. So we can say if event dot current dot type is equal to event type dot repaint. And I'm also going to check to see if our GUI tooltip is not equal to the value we set up top for the tooltip. So if this returns true, I'm going to want to have two things that I can do in here. Uh, one is detect basically uh, when you're mouse moves off an element, we're going to want to set the tooltip to equal, well, empty again. And I'm going to want to, well, not necessarily empty, it's going to equal nothing. And then I'm also going to want to detect when the mouse moves over uh, one of the elements. And I'm going to want to be able to set that tooltip variable we created to whatever the tooltip is that we're receiving from it. So let's start off with basically the, the mouse out event. So I'm going to check to see if my tooltip does not equal our default value, and if it doesn't, I want to set my tooltip to equal that value. And the next one, I'm going to check to see if the GUI dot tooltip does not equal nothing. And I'm going to set my tooltip to equal my GUI tooltip. And now that, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and create the function that's actually going to display our tooltip for us. So again, it's going to be private. It will not return anything. And I'm just going to call this one display tooltip. It will not receive any parameters. And all I'm going to do in here is just check to see if the, the tooltip variable that we've created, if it does not equal nothing, the double quotes, then we're going to display that box and display that the tooltip. So if tooltip does not equal double quotes, I'm just going to come up here and I'm just going to copy this. So I'm going to draw my box, placing it at the exact same spot that we already have, but instead of placing the tooltip in there, what I'm actually going to put in is the variable. So now all we have to do is take this set tooltip function, and then anything that we actually want to have a tooltip for, well basically uh, the buttons that we want to have tooltips for, We'll go into that function, in this case will be the loot window, and instead of saying uh, the GUI box, we'll just actually call that method. And since that method is called within there, the tool, uh, the GUI.tooltip still exists, so we can get it. And then we're going to take the second one we created, the display tooltip, and we're just going to throw that at the bottom of our GUI, which is up a little bit higher. 
So I'll just put this in here. Now let's save that off and I'll load up Unity and we'll just go test it out. So we'll start it up. And I'm going to open a chest. And let's hover. There we go. Now there's a lot more we could do to make it nice and pretty, but uh, for now I just want to get the information up there and uh, we've accomplished that. And of course it disappears after when you're not mousing over anything. So let's pick some items up. And now let's enable it to work with our inventory. And that's pretty simple. So we'll go back into Mono Develop. I'm going to shrink my GUI and let's open up, well we don't need clear window, the inventory window. This is where we want to put it. So I'm going to copy this set tooltip right at the very bottom, uh, either before or after you have the ability to drag the window. Either one's fine. And right here is the only line we have to change. And this is where we're checking the player's inventory count. And if they actually have something in there, then we put it out as a button. We just have to change it back to a new GUI content. And the content we want to display for now, we're just going to put the name. And then we're also going to pass in the tooltip. So player character dot inventory the index of the item and its tooltip and the closing bracket we'll save that off we'll head back into unity and we'll give it a whirl there's no errors so we'll start it up run over to a chest open and we'll just quickly empty this chest now when we hover over our inventory items, we get uh, our little tooltips up here as well. So our tooltips as far as displaying them goes is pretty much done. Uh, pretty much everything else we're going to be doing with tooltips will be actually in the classes themselves. And while we do have a little bit more time, so I'm going to show you how to override a function in C sharp so I'm gonna go and open up my items class uh, there we go item and we noticed down here that we had uh, a string tooltip uh, basically we're creating a public method that returns a string and that method is called tooltip and the string it returns is the string we're constructing with our variables that we have set up in this class uh, if we wanted to implement this on weapon, because we're going to have more things to display for uh, weapons, uh, we're going to want to create another tooltip. Well, the problem is if we come down here and we say public string tooltip, and let's just return that for now, just so it doesn't err. If we head back into Unity, we're going to get a little warning about it. So it's the first warning that popped up, and it's just telling you that it hides an inherited member item.tooltip, and we, we don't really want that. So what we can do is come into items.cs, and we're going to add the keyword virtual in front of it, and think of it as meaning uh, this function uh, can be changed in an inherited class to basically do something else. So now when we go into weapon, I can come in here and I'll type override. And what this does is it says, you know, hey, I, I know I already have this function that I'm getting from item called tooltip. But what I want to do, you know, I want to do something different with it. So here's what I'm going to do. And if we go back into Unity, we notice we no longer get that warning. We just get the warning 
uh, about a variable that we haven't done anything with and one for stitch which is just another uh, plugin that I'm playing around with so let's just head back into mono develop and I can actually take what we already have here I'm going to add it into weapons except after durability now now I'm going to add the damage so I'm just going to add a plus over here and I'm going to start with the minimum damage and the minimum damage is just a percentage that we're using like the damage var of the max damage so we can say max damage multiplied by damage variance and then to that we're going to add uh, some sort of separator for it so I'm just going to use a space a negative sign in the space and then I'm going to add on the max damage value I'll save that off I'll come back into unity and since we're creating weapons right now we should be using the weapon tooltip as opposed to the item tooltip now so our uh, damage should show up when we hover and there we go now I'll obviously want to format that a bit better as you can see you know 6.535592 isn't exactly what I want I probably just want to round it off to two decimal places so in this case it'll come out to 6.54 but as you can see it's pretty easy to take something that's already created and change it a bit to change it according to the class that you're going to be using now buff item you're never actually going to make anything from buff item buff item is purely there just to be inherited from so I'm not too worried about creating a tooltip here and overriding but when we get to armor again we're gonna to have to create another tooltip just for it well this is putting us up about 13 minutes so I'm gonna sign off on this one and I'll see you in the next one bye bye